Welcome to Tuesday, the 27th of June. This is uh, Frontier Opening Bell here on Frontier Africa Reports. Thank you, everyone, for making the time to be here. Let's, let's start, as always, on the market street, where the Nigerian market started the week on a positive side, 22 basis points to the north, led by big names in the banking sector, such as JITCO, Access Bank, and Zenit Bank. We've got a couple of names outside the banking sector, such as Boa Cement, leading the market to the upside of the market at about roughly $80 billion in local currency. On Monday, despite the uh, sell-off that we saw in Intel Africa and MTN, the largest telco MTN was down by more than 2% on the trading uh, day. Let's uh, look at the BRVM was up by 0.31%, a solid 197.44. The Egyptian market reversed Sunday's negative 2.48% to claw back 2.1% of that on uh, Monday, and that's joining the rest of the global marketplace. Sunday is the start of uh, final markets and business day in, in Cairo, Egypt. 2.18% uh, are very solid, 17,665. In South Africa, however, the market was down by just three basis points, led largely down by financials and um, resources uh, companies listed on the most advanced markets on the African continent in line with the emerging markets, uh, softs that we, uh, that we saw on, uh, Monday, broadly speaking. The, the GSC down by 19 basis private pattern. The Nairobi stock market was down by 0.03%. Just a little retracing from the current upside that we've seen from, uh, Kenya, of course, with the central bank on the, the news governor. Uh, 2J, uh, releasing first, just 1% upside to the country's lending rates on, uh, Monday to 10.50%. That was the 18th uh, consecutive month of, um, hawkish interest rates focused by the central bank here in Nairobi. That, that's just about the markets for your, um, Monday. Of course, the Zimbabwe stock market, uh, uh made about 1.3% on Monday, uh, as well in Southern Africa. Look quickly through the big stories across the East African continent. Kenya's uh, central bank raised interest rate from 9.5% to 10.5%, just about 100 basis points. And that's kicking off the new term of the new central bank governor, uh, 2J, who was appointed by President William Ruto to succeed Patrick Njoroge. Total and African oil are leaving Kenya as far as the oil pro production is concerned and oil prospects are concerned. So President Ruto is looking towards India uh, to support the country's quest for oil and gas exploration and production. And Homeboys Entertainment, which was listed around December of 2020 via direct listing, uh, is now trading its shares formerly on the NSC, that's the Nairobi Securities Exchange, and says about 30% of its shares will be uh, floated on the markets. That's some good news for this uh, uh, big entertainment company. Uh, and Tanzania is looking to sign $52 billion host agreements for gas in the new month. That's under President Yuwari Museveni's uh, ambition to make Uganda a hub for oil and gas within the East African community. In the meantime, Rwanda will be hosting the, uh, the next annual general meeting of the Africa Trade Insurance Agency. That will be in the first few days of July, 5th to 7th, three-day event. So let's uh, move on to West Africa where the um, MSCI, Morgan Stanley International, yesterday says he's looking to extend Nigeria's expulsion from the Frontier Index to stand alone because of the recent FX market reforms that's done by the new president, Bola Ahmed Tinubu's administration. So June the 1st was the deadline that Morgan Stanley Capital International gave to Nigeria to consider that moving Nigeria out of Frontier Index to stand alone. Uh, but now that is being uh, moved forward for until further notice. Uh, Morgan Stanley uh, Capital International says he wants to see how things uh, would uh, move on under the new FX regime tend to take decision. There's no formal date as to the next consideration whether Nigeria will remain within the frontier markets index of the MSCI. In the meantime, we've got July just around the corner. The 12th is when the FMDQ Securities Exchange says it will start trading live in three exchange traded products. The Federal Government of Nigeria's bond futures, the Treasury bills futures, as well as the open market operations futures. Those three instruments, debt papers, will have their futures uh, trading live on July the 12th. We'll track that for you live on July the 12th 
here on Frontier Africa Reports. We'll kick in live, lock in into the FMDQ platform that day, and let's see how trading uh, will advance from that day onward. Keep that in mind. In the meantime, the Labour Unions in Nigeria, the Workers Union, are in a bit of a face-off with power companies who are looking to raise power tariff by as much as 40% effective the 1st of July. And Ghana and Nigeria signed a memorandum of understandings to tackle organized crimes across the two English-speaking biggest economies west of the continent. It's a deal between the EFCC, which is Nigeria's Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, and its counterpart in Ghana, which is the EOC. And Senegal says about 2.5 billion euros has been raised from the grouping of international partners to promote renewable energy projects in Makisal's country in West Africa. And the NSIA Bank of Cote d'Ivoire, which is listed, of course, on the BRVM, uh, says he's paying about um, 8.9 billion CFA francs in gross dividend to shareholders for the bank's financial year 2022 ended December the 31st. Let me take you to Southern Africa, where the Eskam's troubles seem to be uh, dissipating as far as low shedding is concerned. So power generation is improving, according to uh, news wires, while off-peak uh, blackouts has been suspended. This will be good news for everyone in South Africa, from households to companies and to the government of President Ramaphosa himself. In the meantime, Edward Kesweta has become the, the second uh, chief of the South Africa's Revenue Service, that's SARS, to be appointed the chairman of the World Customs Organization. We say congratulations to Mita Kesweta for uh, <clears throat> making that position. And let us news out of uh, Zimbabwe says inflation has returned to double digit 175.8% in the current month against 86.5% uh, in the month of May. And we've seen pressure, inflationary pressure piling on Zimbabwe over the last a few months with folks rushing to uh, uh, buy into binging on stocks with the ZSC rallying very strongly between April and June because inflation is eating uh, into the exchange, the Zimbabwean dollar. So folks were looking for safe haven. Uh, the market was up yesterday by 1.3%. Uh, In the meantime, the ZSC, which is the uh, Zimbabwe Stock Exchange, has um, raised the transaction threshold on its ZSC direct by as much as 900% because of our exchange rate situations in the Southern African economy. And the just later regenerate is reporting 3.8% jump in its first quarter oil production, or LNG, I beg your pardon, liquefied natural gas production for the first three months of the current year. Finally, North Africa. Let's step into Egypt, which uh, the MSCI says is likely to kick out of its emerging markets status index uh, if things don't uh, move on as quickly as possible uh, as far as the F exchange rate, the the value of the Egyptian pounds, inflation, and all that is concerned. Recently, President Assis has been completed about the pains of devaluing the local currency against the U.S. dollar and the flotation of the Egyptian uh, pound. Now, the MSCI is considering whether to uh, take Egypt out of its uh, emerging markets into either frontier index, where Nigeria currently is, or into a standalone that will be have consequences for one of the, con the continent's carry trade currency in the economy. In the meantime, Egypt says it's in a new phase of immediate cash payment project. It's now being supported by roughly 8.7 billion local currency. Uh, while Germany and Egypt are signing for f uh, 54 million euros in debt swap deal, that will give President al -Sisi's government some breathing space as far as debt uh, is concerned and its finances, its fiscal balance, that is. As British uh, Sound Energy says it has resolved its tax dispute with the Moroccan authorities. And that's good news. Get the problems out of the way and get business going. And that's your Frontier Opening Bell, Tuesday, the 27th of June. I am Bolsonaro. I'll see you soon. Do have a great day, everyone. And goodbye from here.